assuming they return in 2023, what key changes could potentially be made for the W Series in order to help keep it afloat and still be free for the drivers to compete? Yeah, that, that's uh, that's the big question. Um, I remember at the beginning of the season, at preseason testing, that Catherine Bonmuir told me that uh, obviously the uh, cancelled season was a bit of, a, of an issue for them. Uh, but she was uh, expecting to break even uh, in five years' time. So I, I believe that in some, uh, you know, they did expect not to um, make a profit uh, uh, this this year. And the um, from what we've read from reports, because we don't have uh, much of a, of a insight into the financial situation right now, except for what has been published in, in these couple of, of days. Um, the the depth that the, uh, that has been described it's not that big for for a for a champion for a motor racing in, in motor racing terms. Um, so I believe that, and also they mentioned that they had already had some kind of uh, agreement with the, an American sponsor that fell through uh, when it was already signed. So that they had some some kind of these kind of issues. Um, coming into next year. Um, Obviously, the fact that they are free to enter, that's not a, a help. But I think it's one of the most important features of the championship. So if they would change that, I, in, in my opinion, it would become like a Formula Regional Championship like any others, which doesn't make much sense, in my opinion. Um, so I, I believe that they need to to get on board some some more sponsors and and hope and probably some uh, try to 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 change their uh, whole business uh, um, operation a little bit more focused on, uh, on 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 some major sponsors because I, I know that they are trying hard to do that and and the global situation is not helping. Uh, I, I think also it's a bit down to to bad luck because of course uh, this start in 2019 2020 was already a big problem with covid and now with all the the expenses they had the bad the budgeting and they were budgeting this at the beginning of the season when prices were not this high for ship for shipping for example uh so travel and stuff so i believe they also there's big bad luck uh, factor in, in in this um but yeah they, they they just have to to find some some big sponsors willing to to throw some money into the teams uh next year yeah in, in my opinion as well i think they need to restrict the calendar to european events not go abroad because we've seen they've done it this year and it's cost them big time uh to the point where we don't even know if they're running in the next two races as well they've done it here in singapore and it's been an absolute nightmare even qualifying uh, even though it had nothing to do with earring as well qualifying was just a mess from the point of view of the standings as well um as well i think uh, we need faster cars i think the cars that we've got at the moment are too slow and it's not really entertaining racing as well when they're struggling to overtake we need to introduce some sort of push to pass uh, as well because what we've been seeing a lot this year is a lot of trains forming and a lot of uh, carousel racing where they're just going round and round and round and can never pass each other. And that's not entertainment value. That's not sporting value. It's It dilutes your product an awful lot. Um, so we need faster cars. Uh, we need an bit. We need an ability where they can go slightly longer than the half an hour race. I think we need 45 minute races plus the one lap. Same format as what we have for Formula E. And I also think as well that the positioning of the races need to be uh, looked at once again, because tomorrow it's on just before Formula One's race. But I liked it in the gap between FP3 and qualifying. It was put on max publicity, but it's kind of like they, they went and did one hand behind the back because they put it on Sky Sports F1 purely to get the cash. Uh, but they need to give it another form of freedom. I think after the race has been done live, I think they should put it on YouTube for free. I think they, their social media presence needs to increase a lot. I think their live timing feature as well that everybody uses, if, if you're a diehard fan of things, your live timing needs to be better. Your online services need to be better. Um, I think there's a major, major uphaul that can be done and a crucial thing as well to boost popularity is they need to get it so that it's on F1 TV. It's a different contract because Whisper, uh, which was with Channel 4 and David Coulthard and Jake Humphrey's company is Whisper. Uh, they have the monopoly over the broadcasting because they 
create the wraparound coverage. Formula One produces the TV pictures as well, and W Series uh, get a, a payment of that. They pay Formula One, and then uh, w, um, Whisper pay W Series to produce the wraparound coverage. But I think Formula One TV needs to get involved and get their hands around it as well, and bring it into the fold of Formula Two, Formula Three, and Porsche Super Cup in that situation as well, and just sort of make sure that it's felt more at home because right now it feels like Formula One's got a great product with F1, F2, F3, even the Porsche Super Cups. And then we've got W Series just sort of slotted in as well as the ugly stepsister and just it can't fit in. And it's not fair. It's not fair. I, I agree. Me and Daniel said this a, a few days ago in our chat as well. We think they went to F1 too soon. I know Daniel's got a very a strong point on that as well. They should have stuck with, w, with um, DTM for another year. But we're here now we've got to make the best of it i think put your content on f1 tv which has got uh millions of subscribers around the world as well uh, it just makes sense just have a logical assessment of it as well and work with people not against them as well i think it's w series has always felt a bit standoffish as well in terms of the fact it put a lot of people's backs up uh, many people see it as, oh, well, we don't want that because it's segregation racing. Women can race with men. Yes, they can. No one's denying that. The W Series isn't saying that this is the Formula One for women. No, it's not. The W Series is designed to get female drivers, young female drivers, into Formula One and the bigger series because F1 teams aren't giving them the leg up. And the problem we've been having is Jamie Chadwick, who's such a fantastic driver, is a Williams development driver, yes, but she's won the W Series twice now, is about to win it for a third time, and she's still stuck in W Series and in the lower formulas. There's been no seat for F2. So it's a combination of W Series method is broken and the system is broken for not getting women into the seats. It's like we've come up to, with an advertisement for campaign. We just can't flog the product. So it, it, it's a bit ridiculous at the moment as well. And no wonder they're having a cash flow problem because you go to W Series and it's nothing. It, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. It's just nothing. So that needs to be fixed. And we need to get it much more publicly accessible for everybody to watch as well. I don't know. I think we've got a roaring trade. Faster cars, better TV deal, get drivers into other series, bang, it'll work. And everyone will fall in love with it. If I could just follow up quickly on, on, on what you said, I, I think I, you made a lot of very good points. Uh, a lot of them, I do agree with them. Uh, I just don't agree with the faster cars because so far we are scouting in karting and Formula 4 championships uh, because, of course, we, we have a lack of female talents in Formula, at Formula 3 level globally. Uh, so I believe that still... Uh, this kind of Formula 3 regional level was, uh, was well marketed, was the, the right level, the right first step if we wanted to break that glass ceiling. But except for, for this, only one point that I do not agree with you, all the, all the others I do agree with you. Um, and I do believe that, uh, as, as you mentioned, that going with Formula 1, I do understand why they wanted to do that after 2020 because they wanted to be back bigger. Um, but it was, uh, uh, in my opinion, the wrong move because they, they went too big, too fast. And, and if you really needed a smaller calendar, European calendar with, a, uh, with a, a accessible yet professional environment like DTM. Or if it wasn't DTM, I mean the GT World Challenge, you name it. But uh, with, with a more controlled environment where the people also can be close to, to the cars and to the drivers. Because I remember, for example, the season finale in, at Brent Zatch in 2019, a lot of young girls and, and, and young women were there in the paddock and taking pictures with the drivers. This is how you, you build the, uh, the fan base that you need when you're, when you're a new sport. You, you don't, Formula One paddock is very the most inaccessible thing in sport that you will ever see. This is not how you establish yourself uh, when you don't have that fine base yet. Uh, and then, of course, they made uh, the lives of, of people all around the world very difficult last, last year uh, to watch the races because if you were not in the UK, you didn't have a free-to-air or even a, a, a broadcast deal. Uh, so you, especially in the US, you had a hard time, but also some, so many countries in, in Europe that didn't have the, uh, the broadcast deal. So um, they were a little bit too British-centric in, in, the, uh, in the TV deals. Um, and all, they, they know that. I, 
I mentioned that with, uh, with, with the management. Uh, they tried their best this year, but still it's not perfect and, and still it's too late because now they, they had to build that kind of, of uh, audience uh, before going big with Formula One. But a lot of points, I mean, he, we, could, we could discuss it for, for a couple of hours, but we don't have the time now.